Okay, so let's start disassembling. And the first step is to put the rear sprocket onto the rear wheel. Okay, so next step, we need to take the coaster uh, brake bracket off. There is a dust cover in here. They say that you don't need it, but um, I'm going to try to leave it on there. Now we do have to take one of the rubber pieces and cut it in between two of the bolt holes because that will need to go in behind. Like so. Now this actually fits perfect without this dust cover on there. Um, I'm going to try to put it, as you can see, on the outside. I'm very particular and I want things to last and I want to do things right. Okay, now this could be the tricky part is lining everything up, getting all the bolts through, getting everything to kind of play nice together, making sure everything is straight. So we'll do this one step at a time. Okay guys, uh, that was a little tedious. I did it off camera. I got it on. Luckily, my sprocket fit my hub really well, so centering, there was virtually nothing to center. Um, my only concern possibly is when this tightens up, how it pulls on the spokes, puts everything very close to the sprocket, but we will see. Um, I found the best way to do it was I took a piece of foam, and then it would hold the bolts up against and in place, and then at one at a time, I could work the washers and the nuts on the back side. Then I stood it up and just tightened it up with a uh, ratchet. So next step is I need to put the coaster arm back on. But what happens is now that you've built this out, it doesn't want to fit down on. So what you need to do, there's already a slight bend. You actually need to bend that a little bit more so it'll sit on, but the arm will clear, clear the uh, bolt heads. All right, so I did a little more off camera just because it was tedious work, but I do have it all on and installed with the coaster brake. Um, not being a not very expensive bicycle anyway, you know, it doesn't spin perfect, but it's pretty good. It will uh, do the job for what I need it to do. Okay, so I've removed the pedals. Um, We've got to change out these pedal cranks because they're just too close. So when you try to pedal the bike, it would actually hit the motor. These, these have a much larger offset and uh, will come out further. So let's put those on. And I will be back with reassembly of the new cranks. The piece that needs to go through the hub of the bike to connect the new cranks I do not have, I am missing it. So I sent a note to the seller to see about getting that piece. Um, the way the setup is on the original ones, 
there's no, you don't take this apart, it's all one assembly. So, I'm missing the piece needed to put the offset cranks into that hub. So, I'm going to move on and I'm going to put this motor mount on and see where it needs to go on the bike. And before anybody comments, I will be using Loctite to Loctite everything down, metal, metal uh, connections. So, Let's uh, put this on the bike and see where it's going to fit. Okay, so another discovery. The bolts included to mount to the motor, the motor mount to the motor are too long. Um, so you still have to play. So far I'm not real impressed with the hardware. They can't even get the length of a bolt right. So I'm going to get some that are the right length and I will continue. So here it is just sitting inside the frame, loosely. As you can see, nothing's hitting which is good. Uh, I'm gonna see about pulling that forward just a little bit. I don't want anything hitting, I don't want anything rubbing, any extra vibration, but um, seems to look, look pretty good and fit in there well. So I'm gonna get it lined up, everything loctited and it bolted to the bike, and I will be back. I also wanna point out my screw fix where these were too long. I actually swapped them out with the ones in the side they're the same thing, but just a touch shorter, and they actually work really well. So I just need to add some Loctite, and I can put the bike in the frame. So I did have the clamps on backwards. I swapped those around. I put the exhaust on. Nothing's hitting, nothing's rubbing, uh, except my fender, as you can see here. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is actually just cut that fender higher, and... I'll just cut that bottom piece of the fender off so it'll miss. That's about all I can think of. Okay, I took and installed the gas tank. Pretty self-explanatory with the included hardware. I used their fuel line for now. I'm going to add a fuel filter. Okay, so I went ahead and I had to mess with this cup holder to clear the tank and get the tank bolted on where I wanted it. I'm moving on to the kill switch and the throttle. Um, I got one throttle grip on. I just took and drilled my hole for my kill switch piece. I'm gonna get that mounted up and I'll be back to show you what it looks like. Okay, so I got the throttle hooked up in the kill switch. It took a little bit of messing around, but I got it. Getting everything routed, getting the throttle to open and close properly, getting everything adjusted, everything to clear. Okay, so what I've done is I've put this up on the table, just a little easier to work on. After I got the chain on, I realized it wasn't lined up well. That required me to loosen the motor. I actually was able to drop the motor in the frame a little more to give me a little more room, which gave the exhaust a little more room, but I had to cut down the fender a little more to clear. I put the belt, uh, the chain tensioner on. Alignment, I may have to tweak a little once I get it going but uh, it's not going to be perfect. But as long as I can keep the chain on the sprockets, I think we'll be all set. Okay, so this took a little adjusting. I got the chain on, the tensioner, the guard. The guard, you need to trim and make work. I had to put a little rubber uh, spacer in there to get it to work. Used a couple of self tapping screws. It's not perfect. I may have to tweak it once the bike is running. Um, but it's the way these kits are. So I got the motor to sit a little lower in the frame, which is nice. Everything's tight. The next thing is put a little fuel in the motor and make sure it runs. Hey everyone, so uh, I finally think I've got this. I had to change around the rear sprocket. Both rubbers had to go behind it to set that sprocket out. I had to slide the motor to the right a little to try to get everything aligned. It's not perfect, but it's way better than it was. The chain was walking itself off from the sprockets, but it works well now. I'm sure I'll have to tweak it again once it's ridden a little bit and the chain is stretched, but for right now, it's doing well. I did cut down this rear fender as well to avoid any interference. 
while I had the bike on this uh, lift, I tipped it over. I put a small dent in the tank and took a little paint off. So it's not the best paint job and uh, dents pretty easy. So that's my fault. I'm going to give it a start and show you uh, how easy it is to start and just run it a little. So I hope you all have enjoyed my build video. I hope it gives you a little insight and answers any questions that you may have about doing this yourself. Just be aware it does not come with instructions. It is not bolt on and go like you may see online. It will take some mechanical skills, some tweaking, some adjustments, maybe some fabrication, but it's more than doable. It's very fun. I hope you've all enjoyed it. I will be doing a part three video, a uh, review of it running. So I hope you guys will give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.